But do I think an XC bike is still worth it? Do I think you need one in your quiver? Am I stoked on this? Is this gonna be in the van permanent rotation? Now, just because we're wearing spandex doesn't mean we're gonna treat this specifically like an XC race bike. This is Five Oaks Trail. Definitely on the looser and aggressive side. And that's something that I really do love about this bike is you name it, it can take it. Obviously, I'm gonna be going a little bit slower. What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. Yes, I am wearing spandex, a day that not many people thought they would ever see, not even myself. However, after a big road trip to Asia, as soon as we got back, even though we were in enduro mode, I did get a little bit of an XC bug and I decided to finalize my cross country build. So in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Fazari Signal Peak, as well as giving you guys my opinion on if I think XC bikes are still worth it, if it's worth putting the money in, is it worth lighting them up? And do I think that people need an XC bike? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. If you guys can hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We plan to bring you guys a lot more reviews in the future, so let us know in the comment section if there's a specific review you guys would like to see but with that being said let's get into the review now if you guys have been following the channel you know that for the last year and a half my girlfriend and i have been riding for fazari and we've had a chance to ride almost their entire lineup uh, the signal peak is a 115 millimeter xc slash trail bike you can definitely kind of put it in that trail category because it still has a 67 degree head angle but at the end of the day the lightweight frame and how fast this thing pedals makes this thing an xc bike this bike starts at 37.99 and when i first got this bike it definitely didn't have all of these parts that i upgraded to i I would say just in parts, I've probably done about four to five thousand dollars in MSRP and upgrades. The coolest part is you don't have to spend that much because Fazari is really awesome when you're ordering a bike from them. You can actually upgrade things from their stock build kits. So say there's something that you guys really want, like carbon wheels instead of alloy, or you want to upgrade the cranks, you can actually make any upgrade you want with them in the ordering process. Now we are gonna go for a ride in this video to show you guys this thing on the trails, but I do want to talk a little bit about the build at first. Put a link to everything that we talk about in this video in the description of the video, so be sure check those links out because it does help support the channel at no extra cost to you and yeah huge thank you to anyone who buys anything through our affiliate links up front i have a dvo sapphire i personally i really do love this fork we've been working with dvo for about five or six years now and the sapphire has been one of my favorite forks because it has just a little bit of flex in it so that i feel like it's tracking to the trail really well and i feel like it does really well on xc and trail style bikes paired it in the rear with a dvo opal now it comes stock with a fox I've ridden the Fox extensively. I definitely think that's not my favorite shock. This is a new shock that's hit the market. This thing is insane. It has all of the kind of aggressiveness that you've expected from DVO, however, in a more XC friendly package. For the wheels, that's another upgrade I went with. I actually went with Crank Brothers Carbon Synthesis wheels. These are actually the XC version. So when we run the Enduro wheels on our other rigs, the XCs obviously have a little bit of a narrow rim width. And I wanted this bike to be very pedal friendly, which is why I went with those. And yeah, been super impressed with it. You still feel the difference in the spoke patterns so obviously less spokes up front as opposed to the rear so you get a stiffer wheel in the rear and you get more flex and traction up front and you feel it and these wheels are plenty stiff as well and yeah i've been super stoked to them with the i9 hydra hubs for handlebars i feel like i always go with these these are the one up carbon bars with a 20 mil rise i love these bars and i actually have them paired with one up grips and i think these are actually the best grips on the market obviously i have to run an industry 9 a35 stem just for the bling i went with an orange on here just to kind of make it stand out a little bit but the brakes I actually kept the stock ones. These are actually Ceram G2s. They're two piston brakes, not four piston brakes. And I do feel like they have an adequate amount of stopping power. And obviously I'm not gonna be going as fast and riding as gnarly trails as this, as my LaSalle Peak. So yeah, these have been really awesome. For the drivetrain, I had to shed a lot of weight there. So I took off the GX cranks it came with and I actually put on XX1 carbon cranks, shaved about half a pound right there. And I am running GX AXS. Now I actually love the GX AXS. I'm running transmission on my LaSalle Peak. After putting some time back on the original AXS, I actually think I prefer this over the transmission. And I am running the upgraded shifter up here. I love this thing, man. SRAM really needs to get rid of that pod they have with transmission. Go back to the upgraded AXS shifter. For saddle, obviously I'm running a specialized Mimic saddle, woman saddle, you guys know me, I love this saddle. The dropper post, I actually stayed with the stock one. It's a Fox Transfer 170. And for pedals, I'm running Crank Brothers Candy Pedals. Really do like this, a little bit of a platform on there, but not too much to where it kind of feels like overkill. And once again, you guys, you guys don't have to do all of these upgrades. I just had something in my mind where I really want to kind of see this thing at peak performance, do all of the upgrades. All right, now that we got my build out of the way, and before we go into my final thoughts on this bike, let's go for a quick ride to show you guys how this thing performs on the trails. All right. So as promised, we're gonna take this thing on the trails and I'm gonna give you a little bit of an on-trail review. 
And you know what, guys? Make fun of me for the spandex all you want, but it is about 100 degrees at maybe 90, 90 degrees. I'm probably exaggerating. The spandex feels so good in this heat. Now, what type of XC test would this be without a climb up? What I think is the most challenging section up here. This thing never gets any easier. Kind of allows you to get out of the saddle here. Really test out those switchbacks because we're on an XC bike. Definitely faster up than the LaSalle Peak. Oh man. But it also never gets easier. One last little push up here. I will say the LaSalle Peak seat angle feels a little steeper. And you will notice that on most enduro rigs, we made it up. Most enduro rigs have slightly steeper seat angle than XC rigs. Because obviously these really weren't meant to be straight up and then straight down. A little bit more optimized for cross country efficiency. And yeah, this LaSalle Peak, definitely more of an all mountain DH rig. Now, just because we're wearing spandex doesn't mean we're gonna treat this specifically like an XC race bike. This is Five Oaks Trail. Definitely on the looser and aggressive side. And that's something that I really do love about this bike is you name it, it can take it. Obviously, I'm gonna be going a little bit slower than the LaSalle Peak, but as you guys can tell, no issues whatsoever coming down that. And it really can handle a surprising amount of trail for how light and efficient it is. And I'm clipped in wearing spandex too, coming through this section. Another thing that I really like about it is how stable it is over braking bumps like this. Keep in mind, I'm running an XC fork and an inline rear shock and it's still killing it. A lot of good mini drops and then it is very loose. Signal Peak handles it with ease. Oh, ah, oh, loose slippery rocks that you don't want to fall on. Nice. So much traction under summer conditions, which blows me away by this bike considering how little travel it has. And once again, you guys, that fork, that Sapphire by DVO, pretty insane how well it does. Oh man, come through. Oh, okay. Now, you just gotta not die down here. Please. Ooh. Oh yes. Oh man, 115 millimeters of XC goodness. So an XC bike, which means XC climbs. Making our way up Choya. I'm gonna show you guys this thing on the uphill, even though I feel like we did a pretty good uphill earlier. Never, I mean, obviously, locking out that shock. Uphill, downhill, the only time I do find myself locking it actually is pavement to the trailheads, which is something that I really like about this bike. Gives me the ability to ride two trailheads. I don't feel like I'm sacrificing a ton going on like a mini road ride before my mountain bike ride, but then I still have a very capable descender when I get to the trailhead. Another thing that I really enjoy on this bike is technical climbs. This thing feels like it's glued. Once again, on something like that, man, it feels stuck to the ground. And it just makes me super stoked to take this to places like Sedona. I can't wait to get out there. I feel like this would do amazing out there. Here, more technical climbs, no issues whatsoever. It almost makes you want to take the harder climb. You find you have this extra power coming out of you. And one last trail that I feel like really sums up what this bike is for, and it's one called Rocket. I feel like this is the epitome of this bike. And another thing that I really do love about the Signal Peak is just how stable it is. I feel like the wheelbase is just a little on the longer side, which makes the techie bits super in control and these huge rock gardens feel like absolutely nothing, even though at the end of the day, only have 115 millimeters of travel and it is crushing it. Oh yes, now we got this bottom section, nice and bumpy. Oh yes, 115, no problem. Whew. I'm gonna truth on Rocket is this up and over section coming up. Oh man. 
What do we got? Can we do a clip in? Nice. Oh, but we got this, this little tech climb. And I am clipped in, so I'm gonna try not tip over, but no issues whatsoever. These are the best corners in Laguna, and they feel really good on the spin. And that is another thing that I'm continuously impressed with, just how well this bike corners. Oh, through the rocks. Oh my God, man, summer is here in full swing, guys. And that actually is why I haven't gone with a more cross country style tire. It's because it's pure sand pits out here. If you have ridden in Southern California recently. Oh my God. Oh, this is just gonna be freaking craters of braking bumps. Whatever this section is, the goal is to just survive to the bottom. But honestly, you guys, very impressed. Such a short travel rig and so much confidence coming out of it. I feel like this is really the only bike you need. If you got a one bike quiver, made it down. Well, let's head back and let's finish off the review. Whew. So as you guys can tell, this thing is a ton of fun out on the trails. And I wanna say right now I'm dressed in spandex. The interesting thing about this bike is I feel like I can wear enduro attire and treat this like a down country bike, or I can wear my spandex setup and really try and treat this thing like a true XC bike. That's what I absolutely love about the Signal Peak. So we'll start off with climbing. Climbing, it's a no brainer. This thing pedals amazingly. The acceleration really is there and it really makes you wanna put the power down because you know there's not gonna be any momentum loss. It's not gonna feel like you're putting it down and nothing's coming out, but pedaling efficiency is insane. Climbing, whether it comes to fire roads or more technical style climbs, this thing shoots up with ease. The only thing that I do notice is it does feel like the seat angle is a little on the slack side, not too much. It still feels relatively steep in comparison to some other XC bikes in this category. However, me being a taller rider and having a way taller saddle height, so I'm gonna put my saddle height, that's actually my saddle height right now. Um, yeah, me having the taller saddle height, I'm definitely more sensitive to seat angles. I would say if you're 6'2 and running a super big saddle height, you may have to move that saddle forward. As soon as I moved this thing forward, I definitely felt a noticeable difference there. So yeah, just kind of keep that in mind, especially for you taller riders out there. And man, it blows me away with how fast this thing can take me up the hills. And yeah, when I wear spandex, I feel a little bit quicker, but that's not to say that you need spandex. Even when I have flat pedals on this thing and I'm treating this thing like a down country bike, I definitely still feel like this bike is so easy to pedal. And I, yeah, don't feel out of place. I don't feel like I'm on like an XC machine and I can't ride any fun trails. Now, downhills where this bike truly does shine. So as I mentioned, 67 degree head angle. So yes, this thing can be an XC race bike, but it can also be a bike that's perfect for all types of trails out there. You may find yourself trying to slow your speed a little bit if you're riding a full on double black diamond trail. However, this thing will handle its own. Traction is very noticeable. It definitely has that right amount of traction from that suspension design. And I constantly am impressed with how well this thing is sticking to the trail, especially when things get chunky and rocky. And yeah, this thing is constantly blowing me away with what it can actually ride. Obviously this thing is a rocket ship up and as I mentioned this thing does insanely well down but do I think an XC bike is still worth it? Do I think you need one in your quiver? Am I stoked on this? Is this going to be in the van permanent rotation? My personal thoughts on this bike is it would do a one by quiver if you weren't planning on riding full on downhill trails. So for us personally, we can have two bikes each in the van, we have to choose. Do we want to bring a road bike and a mountain bike? Do we want to bring a gravel bike and a mountain bike or two mountain bikes? Me personally, I like to have the road bike with me. So the other bike is going to be a mountain bike. And I like to ride really aggressive style downhill trails, even though I like to put in big miles in the saddle. I wish I could bring this bike with me because those big miles in the saddle, man, you can go for some ridiculous rides. If I go for a big XC ride on my LaSalle Peak, say I wanna do like 30 miles of fire road, it's gonna feel very overbearing. I'm not gonna want to do that ride as often where this bike, it doesn't really matter what trails you're riding, it's gonna have a blast on. It could be a green trail and this thing is gonna treat you like a rocket ship or it could be a double black trail and you might have to bring your speed back just a tad, but it's gonna get you down safely because of that 67 degree head angle. So yeah, this thing would make all of those rides super fun but at the end of the day I really do want to push it on the downhills and that's where I feel like an XC bike for me personally isn't that one bike quiver if we had a home base I would pair this with my LaSalle Peak in a heartbeat I feel like they complement each other really well hey there's that like all day mission I definitely feel like I would rather be on this sacrifice a little bit of my time on the downhills but make up more than that on the uphills and that's where I feel like this thing comes into play I'll put links to everything that I talked about in this video in the description and once again you guys let us know in the comment section if they missed anything if you guys have any other questions or if there's any future reviews you guys would like to see on this channel with that being said hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and until next time you guys ride awesome Woo!